the office that we've built for the citizens of the Seventh Circuit is incredible. State Attorney for the Seventh Circuit, R.J. Larizza, was sworn in for his fifth term. He spoke to Liz Ryan about his career. When he completes his fifth term, he'll have served for 20 years. But it's hard to get him to talk about himself. He prefers to talk about the people he surrounds himself with. We have incredible people working here. We've created a lot of initiatives, the Young Guns Initiative, where we have went after gun violence. I'm working with the superintendents of schools to have a presence in each school district. We built a strong domestic violence unit. But I think one of the most proudest things for me is that we've created a wonderful work environment for the prosecutors. R.J. Larizza has had to delve into cases that are brutal, violent, and heart-wrenching. I've tried several death penalty cases, child sexual abuse cases. I've tried a case where a corrections officer was murdered by an inmate and was able to bring justice to the brutal murder of a female corrections officer. How does a human being cope with seeing the worst of the worst every day? For some reason, I think I'm just built for it. I think what keeps me going is that somebody has to stand up and stand down these folks who commit these crimes against our law-abiding citizens. And that gives you a purpose. It gives you a mission that cannot be denied. He's looking forward to getting a lot done in his fifth term. I'll be working with the legislature to pass the Rainer Bill that commemorates the life of uh, Officer Jason Rainer, the Daytona Beach police officer that lost his life in the line of duty. That bill will protect law enforcement. I'm also looking forward to working with corrections, with the public defender's office, with the legislature to help continue to create programs that protect and preserve the quality of life and the wonderful communities we have in the Seventh Circuit. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Liz Ryan. Good morning, Flagler County. I'm Rich Carroll. You're listening to Flagler's Morning News on Friday, June 28th. Why are there Little League fields near a swamp? That's the question that the chair of the Flagler Mosquito Control District, Mike Martin, asked when his department could no longer spray for mosquitoes at Indian Trail near Eula Swamp. He said they had to come up with a creative way to get rid of the bugs so Little Leaguers would not be bitten. We have acquired what's called an, an attractive sugar bait toxin. It's not regulated as a pesticide. It's basically date juice, garlic, mixed with a little water. Martin said the Mosquito Control District can spray the toxin whenever and wherever they want to. So we've done, I think, three or four sprayings in Indian Trail so far this year. We hope this will cut the mosquitoes down and we can spray this on demand. He calls it a win-win for everybody. Listen to all your favorite programs here on WNZF or anytime on the Flagler radio app. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. A derelict vessel, as we define it, is any vessel that's on the the waters of the state that's either wrecked, junked, or in substantially dismantled condition. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is celebrating a major milestone in their vessel turn-in program. FWC removing the 100th vessel since instituting the program in late 2022. Public Information Officer Chad Weber says abandoned vessels can pose navigational and environmental problems. At certain times they can be, depending on the status of the vessel. You know, if there's fuel on it or say it was a liveaboard and there's, you know, they don't have a marine sanitation device, so that raw sewage could be potentially spilling into our waterways. Weber says they've had close to 200 derelict vessels reported. The general public, we get calls from them uh, to our dispatch, uh, our officers that are on patrol. You know, if they see a, a vessel, then they, uh, they'll they determine whether it's derelict and conduct a derelict vessel in investigation. So uh, there's, there's several different ways. Like I said, the general public will call in or uh, our officers on patrol will see them as well. Weber says owners of these vessels will be held responsible. Ultimately, if they don't sign up for the VTIP program, the owner is responsible for removing the vessel and can find, uh, face fines for however many days the, the vessel has become derelict. If you see a derelict vessel, you can report it by calling 1-888-404-3922. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Daryl Newton. It's the final weekend of June, and there's plenty of family fun going on in Flagler County. This is Stacy with Fun for Augie Kids. Palm Coast is hosting Family Art Night tonight. This event features a fun and simple art project that families create together. All of the materials are provided, and the program is free. 
Join the Flagler County Library for a free movie matinee. Watch the featured movie Next Goal Wins on a large screen with real surround sound. Tomorrow is the annual Children's Business Fair. Local kid entrepreneurs develop a brand, create a product or service, build a marketing strategy, and welcome customers at this one-day marketplace. So stop by and support our next generation. Gamble Rogers is offering a guided kayak or canoe tour. Enjoy the serenity of being on the water while observing the native flora and fauna in their local habitat. For more on these events and others, please visit us on our website at fun, the number four, augiekids.com. Have a great weekend. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll. And now, Mike Lee Show with your WNZF local sports update. It's not a dream anymore. It's not a dream. It's reality. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Matthew Kachuk is a Stanley Cup champion. The Florida Panthers hosted Game 7 in Sunrise Monday. Tied at 1 in the second. The Oilers went on the attack, but goaltender Sergei Bobrovsky was too much. Out to the right point for CeCe. Down along the boards, then dry sidle. Fogel cuts out front. And a save Bobrovsky, and then it's pushed away out of harm's way by Kulikov. And the Panthers break it out quickly. Here's Reinhardt at the right wing side. Reinhardt to the right circle. A shot, and he scores! Sam Reinhardt gives the Panthers a 2-1 lead here in Game 7. He had had a quiet series, but Sam Reinhardt showed up when it mattered most, scoring the biggest goal in Florida Panther history. The Florida Panthers have won the Stanley Cup! Both calls courtesy of WQAM. The Panthers win their first championship, becoming the first team since 1945 to win Game 7 after leading 3-0. Paul Maurice is no longer the winningest coach without a Stanley Cup. I haven't been in the gym in a long time. (laughs) So there was a slight moment when I'm hanging on going, am I going to be able to get this thing over my shoulders, right? Because they're all beat up. Anyway, it's heavier than I thought. We have here. The Oilers' Cup drought will enter season 35, while Canada has now gone winless in 31 straight finals. Round one of the NBA draft took place Wednesday night in Brooklyn. With the 18th pick in the 2024 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Tristan Da Silva from Munich, Germany, and the University of Colorado. The 6'8 forward was second team All Pac 12, averaging 16 points a game for the Buffaloes this season. Major League Baseball, after an off day Thursday, the Tampa Bay Rays host the Washington Nationals tonight. Matanzas Athletic Director Jordan Butler announced the hiring of Ethan Buchanan as golf coach. Ethan is an Air Force veteran and currently serves as the assistant golf pro at Grand Haven. He replaces outgoing coach Thad Busby. WNCF is your home for local sports, with updates Mondays and Fridays. From the Sports Desk, I'm Mike Lucio.